Apart from Kufa, which was considered an important city during the days Muslims gained victories after the Prophet, the Levant was also a city full of tensions within Constantinople, and it was considered spoils of war as the Muslims had gained it after fighting with the Romans. Since Omar ibn Khattab, the second caliph, Malvi ibn Abu Sufyan had been the governor of the city and he was also the commander of the Levant army. At the time of the third caliph, Osman ibn Affan, Malvi retained the position and established a powerful government in Constantinople. Oh, how's everything going, Farouk? Really bad. If you ask me how I'm feeling, I'll tell you that I'm dying. <sighs> it's really hard, no man. The rich would be happier if you take away their life instead of their wealth. These trays are just the taxes paid by the rich in the Levant, and look at their faces. They pretend that they deserve to receive arms. Neglect your duties for a moment. You'll lose a bag of gold coins. How's everything with you, no man? Mm, everything's great. When the treasury is full and the army is well equipped, we have to be ready for a new victory, Farug. Mm. Mm. Let's go. Tell the cook that the yogurt drink didn't have enough salt. Oh, God, thanks for your blessings. Get it, Norman. Read it. In the name of God. Read it loudly. In the name of God, glory be to him. From the Caliph of the Muslims, Osman ibn Affan, to the governor of the Levant, Muir ibn Abu Sufyan, we received your letter. We have been informed that Abu Zar Ghaffari gives fiery speeches about war spoils and calls on the poor to rise up against us. War spoils are the assets that Muslims gain without bloodshed and the Caliph and his representatives are the owners of the assets. No one can decide about or have control over spoils. If Abu Zar wants to act according to his own decrees and get in the way of things, then put him on a camel with a hard saddle and send him all the way to Medina. May the glorious God grant Muslims dignity and honor and grant you the blessings for praying to him. I swear to God that repelling Abu Zar's evil acts is harder than conquering Rome. What are you going to do with Abu Zar? Whatever you order, Governor. Not me. Whatever the Caliph orders. If we were to act without the Caliph's permission, the first thing would be to behead that crazy man from Ghaffari tribe. Execute the Caliph's order in the best way possible. Spoils of war belong to God. 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 Be quiet! Stay there! 
Look at these. You have to press a piece of stone against your stomach because of hunger? The gifts you see here aren't given by Caesar. These are the taxes by the wealthy people in the Levant. Hey! Do you know that three people want to take over your wealth? The first one is your own fate. That doesn't ask for permission to destroy your wealth. The second one is your inheritor who is waiting for your death. And the third one is you, yourself. Donate something as charity. Do something good. Hmm? Yeah. You have to know that every day two angels come down to the earth. Hmm? One of them prays to God to give rewards to anyone who gives people charity. And the other one curses and asks God to put anyone who accumulates wealth to death. And you! Oh, poor people who wear ragged clothes. It's strange that they see poverty in their houses. But don't use swords against them. The spoils of war belong to God. 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 You meddlesome rebel! You're crazy! The spoils of war belong to God. The spoils of war belong to God. Spoils, spoils, spoils! What spoils are you talking about? Aren't spoils the assets that Muslims gain without fighting a yes. war? Do such assets belong to God or the people? God doesn't need any assets. Whatever exists belongs to the creatures of God. Aren't we creatures of God? Yes. Yes, you are. But you've forgotten God. You have many clothes. You eat holy bread, and they make different kinds of food in your kitchen. Muia! Do you... do you need anything more than two sets of clothes and a full stomach? What do the Caliph and his representatives need the spoils of war for? Should they keep the spoils for themselves? Or should they spend them for the welfare of the people and the prosperity of the land? <laughs> Sit down. Look at his pale face. And now look at his rosy face. Where in the religion of Muhammad is this big difference allowed to happen? Prove that he has accumulated a single dirham through illegitimate ways and I'll make him pay it back. I'm talking about generosity. I'm talking about wastefulness. You haven't realized the essence of Muhammad's religion. You've only learned about God through what is allowed and what is forbidden in our religion. How can I prove it when someone like him follows a person like you? Listen, 
I showed you the person who steals your means of life. Don't be cowards. You have to know that a man's power is in his heart, not his clothes. And the sharpness of a sword is because of its blade, not its sheath. Good job. Are you the thief of these people's assets? Me? No, sir, no. I swear to the beneficent God. No, sir, no. No! I'm a merchant and I've gone on many hard journeys. I have stayed awake many nights because I was worried. The bandits might ambush us, sir. I've been seriously injured by the bandits' swords many times. I'm telling the truth, sir. I have always been careful about my gains and losses. I have always paid my taxes on time. I hope my wealth turns into worms if I owe anything to the people. Please believe me, sir. Please believe me. Then get it. Get this sword. On charges of revolting against the Caliph, and making false accusations cut off his head. <laughs> no, Governor, no. I've never had anyone's blood on my hands. No, don't force me to do it, sir, please. Please, sir, don't force me to do this. You're a liar. You are the culprit. No man! Yes, Governor. Cut off his head. Okay, I'll do it, sir. Sir, I'll do it, sir. No, 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 please, no, 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 If you rely on the sword, this is the answer. But if you rely on intelligence, you have to go to the mosque. You take him for treatment and pay the compensation money for an arm. If he dies, I'll kill you as a punishment. And you? Yes, Governor. Distribute a bag of gold coins among the poor. Yes, Governor. No man? Yes, Governor. Make Abu Zah sit on a wooden saddle on a camel and send him to Medina with your most ruthless men. Abu Zah's family members should stay here in the Levant.
water. Marvon! Uh, is that you, Mariam? Did I scare you? Uh, why should I be scared? Do you want something? Uh-huh. We have to spread the food cloth. The Caliph won't eat before the eldest son-in-law joins us. I'm not the eldest son-in-law. In terms of age, you're not. But in terms of intelligence, you are. Marwan! Well, you should be careful Marwan. your sisters don't become jealous of you. <laughs> Marwan! Oh, God damn you. What are you afraid of, Marwan? Didn't you see how Valid ended up? Valid was an idiot. His heavy drinking of the most evil thing in this world caused his downfall. Marwan, you're not supposed to get stuck in the misery that Moaiye has gotten rid of. Both of you are my loved ones. Abu Zar will be a big burden for you in Yasrev. Finish him off before he reaches Yasrev. Oh, uncle! Abu Zar's presence in Yazrib isn't a serious danger. Is he more influential than Ali? Ali is right where we are. Why can't he do anything against us? Abu Zar is not Muhammad's relative or his household or his son-in-law. He's only a desert-dwelling companion who hasn't had the honor to participate in the battles of Bad or Hod or Kandak. <laughs> no, uncle, no. Even if, as you said, Abu Zar is a storm, he's a nobody. <laughs> If you don't listen to me today, you'll have to beg for my help when Abu Zar becomes a nuisance for you. Comparing Abu Zar with Ali is stupidity, Marwan. It's up to you. Hey, uncle. Hey, uncle. We need the Caliph's degree in order to kill Abu Zar. Forge his handwriting and steal his seal. The Caliph wears the seal on his finger. We have to cut off the Caliph's finger to steal it. But the Caliph's daughter is in your hands. Marianne is still a child. She can play with her father's seal. Kab is the treasure of undiscovered saying by the prophet. There is a saying about an easy way to get into heaven. It says whoever eats one Aken onion in Mecca, they will definitely get into heaven. Whoever buys one Aken onion from Sarji Sheikh is like they've bought a plot in heaven. Whoever buys two Akin onions from Sarji Sheikh, it's like they've brought two plots of land in heaven. And whoever buys three Akin onions from Sarji Sheikh, it's like they've bought three plots of land in heaven. 
Whoever buys four Akin onions from Sarji Sheikh, it's like they've bought four plots of land in heaven. Whoever buys five Akin it's onions bizarre. from the Sarji Sheikh, tell her it's I'll like give you a hundred dinars to the poor as heaven. charity. If we see a bosa, it's smiling once in our lifetime. It's like they've bought six plots of land in heaven. Why Whoever are you looking at us with such sorrow and hatred? Like You're a faithful man. Seven plots of land Finally, heaven. you even made Ever God live in a palace on the earth. From Sarji Sheikh, it's like mm-hmm. they've bought eight plots of land in heaven. Whoever Only my bandits and I haven't Sheikh, received our like share. Where's the light of God? Of Where's the scent of the prophet? Whoever the mosque that was built by the prophet from Sarji Sheikh, it's like they've bought an entire would purify heaven. the heart. But the mosque I see today purifies the grave. Can you recite a saying by the Prophet which orders Muslims to live in houses whose walls are made of mud with scorpions on it and whose floors and ceilings are covered with straw? Should I recite a saying? Thank God you've received a lot of divine inspirations. Everybody in this city is talking about the Prophet's sayings and Quranic verses, Talha. Everybody is talking about his saying about the Akeh Onion. Listen. What did I say? I will say it once more. Whoever buys one Akin Onion from Sarji Sheikh, it's like they've bought a plot of land in heaven. Whoever buys two Akin onions from Saji Sheikh, it's like they've bought two plots of land in heaven. Whoever buys three Akin onions from Saji Sheikh, it's like they have purchased for themselves three plots of land in heaven. Whoever is to buy four Akin onions from Saji Sheikh, it's like they've purchased for themselves Four plots of land in our heaven. Whoever buys five. Why do you remain silent when they attribute those lies to the messenger of God? Onions from Sarji Sheikh. It's like they've bought six plots of land in heaven. Whoever buys seven Akin onions from the Sarji Sheikh. It's like they've bought seven plots of land in heaven. Only God knows when he will die so we can live in peace. Nine plots. Ten onions, the entire... The bazaar is dead ever since Mohammed has left, Sabah. What are you looking for, you Jewish wanderer? Scholar, I'm looking for Joseph. Well... You can go and ask Egypt's pharaoh. We don't have anyone named Joseph in Yasreb. <laughs> I don't have the wrong address. The groves in Yasreb are alive because they're blessed with the breath of someone like Joseph. I found my Joseph in a well. A well? Abu Zar. Who are you? Hmm? Hmm? I don't know who I'll be tomorrow, but today I'm Abraham in the Temple of Idols. You don't have any spirituality from the Messenger of God. Did you just call the House of Caliph a Temple of Idols? I'm sure that you were fabricating another false saying before I came here to pass off some useless pumpkins of your guys as heavenly blessings. I've heard the saying about the magical Ake onions. Did the prophet ever say, whoever eats an onion from Ake, it's like they've bought a plot of land in heaven? I'm asking you, Marwan, with what I said? Which idol does Kaab resemble? We don't have any time to waste on your nonsense, you desert man. Get out of here. I want to see the caliph. I am the caliph. I'll say a prayer for the dead, then I'll go. 
Listen, you idiot from the Gafari tribe. From now on, if I hear that you've issued a decree, I will brand your tongue. Now get out of here! Abu Zar was a Sufa companion. The Sufa companions were the people who had come to Medina from the Arabian Peninsula surrounding areas to live close to the Prophet. As they didn't have any houses to live in, they would use the platform of the mosque called Sufa as their resort. Abu Zar got married to a female companion who later came to be known as Umm Zar and left the Sufa companions. As his desert dwelling nature was more adapted to deserts, he made a hut on a hilltop near Medina. Hey, sister. Don't you have a camel or a horse or even a donkey so you can travel easily? No, brother. We carry our burdens ourselves. Which tribe are you from? The miserable tribe. <laughs> what do you want from us, brother? Nothing. Ride this camel. You'll feel more comfortable. I'm also from the Disaster Tribe. <laughs> Accept this camel. I will become your wife based on a determined marriage portion. I accept it.
Welcome to Abuza's unknown fate. Aren't you tired of the loneliness? I found God in my loneliness. Well, we are creatures of God. Anyone who has many horses, donkeys, and slaves, and their houses are made of stone and mortar, and their clothes are made of Yemeni textiles, and their food is always delicious, should consider Abuza as their enemy. Oh, people! Be aware when poverty gets into a house from the front door. Faith leaves the house from the back door. He has broken his allegiance. He's forged the prophet's saying and his attributed lies to the prophet. He's opposed the caliph's decree. And he slanders respectable wealthy Muslims, some of whom are the prophet's close companions. He encourages the poor to revolt and has accused the sheikhs of not being steadfast in their faiths. I don't believe any sane person from the Sufar companions would commit a sin he's insane. Insane people aren't criminals and they shouldn't be punished. We will tie him up so Muslims will be safe from his harm. Shame on you, Marwan. You're the son of the lizard. Do you know our friend better than us? Zubair, if people are supposed to be blamed for their ancestors, most of us should be ashamed of ourselves. Abuza comes from the Ghaffari tribe bandits, doesn't he? He was a bandit himself, wasn't he? How can we be sure that human beings won't go back to their roots? Oh. Stay away from disunity. Stay away from ignorance. Stay away from oppression. May, may God never forgive me if I break my allegiance to the Caliph or forge the Prophet's sayings or tribute false words to the Prophet that I loved so much. God's servants get close to him through their faith, not their tribes. I don't need Talha and Zubair's support. And I'm not scared of the Umayyad tribe's hostility. I don't possess anything, so I'm not worried about losing anything. I don't wish to get anything from them. As long as the Caliph is surrounded by people like you, he can't rule like Abu Bakr and Omar. Hey, Abuza, Where to? Marwan. Listen, you should send him into exile. Rabazé. Rabazé. Don't forget it. Rabazé. <laughs> <laughs> 